the observatory in Greenwich, England. Astronomers in the United States, Jefferson, for example, usually measured his longitude with respect to Williamsburg, because the longitude of Williamsburg was well known with respect to Greenwich and Paris. And so Jefferson used Williamsburg as his zero of longitude. Various other US astronomers and navigators used Philadelphia or New York at the various times. It wasn't until the late 1800s that the world got together and decided to arbitrarily pick Greenwich, England as the start. A young old, old sapling of sufficient strength, and it would be mounted on the floor with a universal joint that would allow the sapling to rotate around. Energy that we don't understand that we've done dark energy. So, where do we get to this? Well, okay, so in the beginning is the big name. And so I'm first preaching to the choir, but how do we know that there was a big bang? One is that we discovered in the 1920s uh, that we were not unique in the universe, that everything was rushing away from us. And at first you might say, well, that is a unique thing. But, uh, but in reality, it turns out it's just a simple fact that if you are you are uh, in an expanding cloud of universes, everybody seems to be racing away by fire. <laughs> so what we actually had when we had these microwave links that were spaced about every 10 miles, 20 miles. But so this really, if you plot this out, this is frequency. Can you pipe in some music for me? Sure. <laughs> so so it's not the variable when you know the magnitude. Second variables, if you know the period of second variable, you can back out what gets in transit and the public and try to make connections to, to, to ordinary folks uh, to the sort of things that we do. Um, when I worked at Hubble, of course, we had tons of everyone gasps and faints, and it was like, my job is done. In radio, things are much more difficult, you know, particularly traditional radio astronomy that delivers things that contour plots, right, that no one understands among the public. This has been actually demonstrated in studies. So anyway, our organization operates the telescopes that are listed there. Uh, the one I'll be talking about today is called the ALMA, the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array. We also operate the famous uh, Very Large Array, uh, recently christened the Carl Jansky Very Large Array. Green Bank Telescope in West, West Virginia. I hope you've been there. Uh, please pick up a brochure out of some on the table and come visit Green Bank uh, and stay a while. And then the Very Long Baseline Array, a telescope no one can visualize because it consists of 10 25 meter radio dishes uh, spread across about two widths of the diameter of the planet. And also did the editing. So that was uh, essentially the crew plus me wandering around uh, as a gopher. One of our planet's most inhospitable places. Known as Alma, the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array. This 30 year project promises to open a new window on the cosmos and redefine our place among the stars. All of us ask ourselves, where did we come from? Alma will be providing us with the key information for us to learn how Earth's actually came to be. Oh, Jeff, Jeff, on the dirty one, you can actually see it outgassing. So you can see where oh, cool. like, the dry ice on the inside is actually mm -hmm. releasing. So this one's frozen on the outside still. There's, there's a couple so spots a couple. Like down there. So when you crack them open, you can see that a lot better. And you can also see the cavities that are created as it outgasses. Oh, that's really neat. Yeah, it's, it's a really, a, really love this type of activity. simple, yeah. fun demo. I think adults really enjoy it. <laughs> And then these are good, like this one will be good for quite a long time. These are going to go away a little bit faster. Dry ice and dirt. Dry ice, dirt, water. Yeah, because it's not Yeah, eventually it'll, it'll sort of make pits and holes. So which one's Kevin Bryan? Which one's Kevin Bryan? Oh, I made these little cover arts. Very good. I mean, you 
I came across something uh, that, that I want to share with you all, uh, something that our club has taken up. Essentially, the idea is having a library loaner scope. Now, I know a lot of clubs offer telescopes uh, through, their, through their club to uh, let their members use, or maybe... Only one people observe it. I told you that our group normally goes, we like going out to the wineries and doing so. Well, the winery, we will have a long line of people in through scopes, and of course, you know, they've, they've had a little bit, so they're in a pretty good mood. But in general, there are, there are more women there than men, and they're pretty happy to look at that telescope than the guys. Yeah, that looks